I'm a new parent. Uh... <laughs> so you're a new parent and it's scary. I mean, things change all the time. I remember growing up that baby powder was a thing, but talc, ah, thinking about rice cereal, bad things in it, like you can't eat that now. So things are very dynamic, things are changing. I hope that um, this will stay true for a long time. It's really helped me as a parent uh, and my kids are, you know, four and two now. So I hope that I can instill some wisdom on you new parents because it's a scary time. So for you parents that are new or not new and you just feel completely clueless, which is completely normal because I have felt like that many times. I had my first child while I was in residency at Harvard in Boston. My family's all in Hawaii. I had no family to help out. My wife as well. So I definitely had those times where I just wanted to jump on the phone and call somebody uh, for tips. Thankfully, a lot of my residency colleagues had kids already so they could help me out. But I just wanted to give you five tips for newborn uh, skincare. Next, I'll be talking about, I'm not sponsored by any of these companies, but you know, they're so crucial. They're so important to have on hand. I will always continuously uh, order them on Amazon, having them shipped to me because they're so good to have on hand. Like seriously, I, they're, they're life-saving and very important. They're really good for sh uh, baby shower gifts. So if you have a lot of friends or family having kids, these are great, you know, have a little children's book and then um, package it up with one of these skincare products, especially, you know, Desitin or Aquaphor or sunscreen. Those are all really good things to have on hand at all times. One, Aquaphor. You guys know that I love Aquaphor and Vaseline, that greasy petrolatum petroleum ointment. It's so nice, it's soothing, it doesn't hurt the baby if they're scratching themselves, they have open wounds or cuts or what have you you know, for your infants, your toddlers, Aquaphor is great. I used Aquaphor and Vaseline from uh, day one of birth and there have been studies that uh, there are benefits to applying moisturizers to your child or your baby from early on. And so decreasing the chances of developing eczema, but also decreasing the uh, severity of it down the road. With eczema, we see very commonly in this day and age in adults and children. So I say Aquaphor, from the get-go is a great thing uh, to consider. Also, if you have any diaper rash, irritation of the diaper area because you um, went on a trip and you had the diaper on for too long that was soaked or soiled, and you take off the diaper and you're like, oh, poor baby, there's a red rash there on the, on the behind. You definitely wanna soothe the area with a good layer of aquaphor. And don't be afraid to put a lot of aquaphor on. Layer it on like cream cheese on a bagel. That's what I tell my patients. Be real generous with it. Um, the other thing is when your baby starts to teethe, you're like, oh, what the heck is teething? Like they're, they're having diarrhea, they're fussy. Some may even have a low grade fever. Um, they're, they're just, you know, chewing on everything. Everything around you is covered with their saliva and they're just drooling. So when they're drooling, they're gonna get this red rash around their mouth big time. And I, I can almost guarantee you that your child will have some form of this at some point. So to protect the skin around the mouth or the perioral region, I do recommend um, putting a layer of Vaseline or Aquaphor there um, to help with protecting the skin because when you have saliva that sits there, it causes an irritant contact dermatitis. And when the skin gets damaged, you're gonna get bacteria, like an empatigo infections. You can get a fungal or yeast infection in the area. So you definitely wanna protect that area because you don't want things to sit there for too long, like saliva. Number two, what kind of body wash do I use? I love Aqua 4 Baby Wash. Aqua 4 Baby Wash is great because you can use it as a shampoo and a cleanser. And you know, for parents, two in one will get things done. You want things to be done well, an efficient rate. We got so many things on our plate that, oh, that kind of rhymes. We got so many things on our plate that we need things, we need to simplify things, right? So if you have this wash for their scalp and body, uh, it's really saved us. I mean, so when you have a baby, you're not bathing them in the big tub, you have this little sink tub thing that you use and it's just great to have by your sink and wash your baby down. Uh, and then you can carry it on when they go to the big tub 
and I'm still using it for my kids. I mean, it's so great to have on hand. It doesn't irritate or sting their eyes when the soapy water drips down towards their eyes. You don't wanna do that, of course, as much as possible, but if it does happen inadvertently, it won't cause any irritation to their eyes. The other shampoo that I love for uh, babies would be Johnson & Johnson, the tear-free uh, formulation. I think it's great for kids because I've had those accidents where the soapy water fell down into their eyes and there wasn't any irritation. Number three, desitin. So I've talked about this on Instagram, blue desitin versus purple desitin. Which one do I choose? I don't know. That was so hard to make that decision. You're like, one says maximum strength, the other one says something else, they have different pictures. So what I break it down as, the purple is great. Purple, go for the purple uh, too, because the purple has more zinc in it, and zinc is what you want. Zinc oxide is a nice anti-inflammatory ingredient for areas of chafing. So not just for diaper rashes, but for adults with chafing in the groin area, you want a good barrier cream with zinc oxide too because it will prevent intertrigo. Intertrigo is frictional rubbing and thus leading to inflammation. For diaper rashes, you're having a multifactorial environment going on in there. You have urine, feces, you got um, a diaper that's just sitting there with all of those bad things uh, just being stagnant. You also have, um, you're wiping it with um, different wipes, so the wipes can be irritating with the preservatives in it, um, or just the frictional rubbing, because they have, say they got sick, they got a virus in there, they're pooping a lot, you need to wipe them frequently. You're gonna irritate and traumatize that area. And to prevent it from getting too raw, desitin is for the win. Like, I love desitin so much. Uh, and the purple one is much more soothing. It goes on thicker, like cream cheese. So totally fine to layer this one on like cream cheese. The blue one kind of just gets, it's very thin and it just kind of runs and doesn't stay in place as well. It is still viscous, but I love the viscosity of the purple uh, too. Definitely have that on hand. I've needed that. I needed to bring that on the airplane. Traveling is huge because you never know, they're gonna get sick at any point. It's always the most inconvenient times your poor baby's gonna get sick. So you never, you gotta, you gotta be prepared, um, have those baby wipes ready, but also have follow up with, after you clean the area, just follow up with a good layer of desitin before putting on the diaper. So number four, sunscreen. Sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen. You definitely wanna protect that beautiful, silky, smooth baby skin that you're kissing all day. You don't want the UVA, UVB rays to be hitting your baby while in the car. So UVA coming in through the side window, affecting your baby uh, while they're in their uh, car seat. Uh, having your baby with sunscreen on in the car, even if the windows are tinted, UVA still can reach the, your baby through the glass. So um, keep that in mind. Have your sunscreen in the car, have a sunscreen in your diaper bag, have a sunscreen in your travel bag when you go on trips because boys tend to forget that. We try to think about every other thing. Do we have diapers? Do we have baby wipes? You know, I would say um, sunscreen should be part of your diaper bag for sure, just like a hand sanitizer or, um, or baby wipes. Sunscreen, mineral sunscreen, mineral ingredients we talked about before. Zinc and titanium are great mineral sunscreens. The recommendation, it's okay to start wearing sunscreen six months and on. Uh, before that, you just want to sun protect, which is keep them indoors, uh, definitely keep them out of the sun. But sunscreen after uh, six months of age, totally fine. Uh, you want to reapply every one to two hours. Apply the sunscreen at least 15 minutes before going outdoors because it does take a few minutes to set in. And then uh, enjoy your time with your, your babies. They don't care about being all white and pasty. So those mineral sunscreens that make you ghost white, that's fine, just put it on. Um, just like Vaseline, you know, Vaseline, you can put it all over their bodies without them being bothered by, oh, it's too sticky on my pajamas. They're babies, just put it on their entire bodies after the shower and then put their pajamas on just to lock in all that moisture. Sunscreen, they're gonna be ghost white. They'll be so cute still, good for pictures. So number five, I say having a tube of hydrocortisone, the over-the-counter 1% is helpful to have uh, just in case you do get some excessive irritation around the mouth or when they're teething or if you have um, you know, any kind of eczema rash, that's good to spot treat, but don't do that every day and also don't do it longer than a week. If you have uh, a rash that's persisting longer than a week, definitely come and see your board certified dermatologist. But having some low potency steroid like hydrocortisone 1% that's over the counter is okay to do, but um, I definitely wouldn't recommend doing it all the time. Don't do it preventatively because 
uh, if you do it on a consistent basis, steroids can thin out your skin and you don't want to do that to your baby's pristine, perfect skin. But it is nice to have that on hand for emergencies. The other thing I wanted to mention for uh, parents who are into all natural things, all natural, I would be careful with, you know, you go to Whole Foods, you're like, oh, they sell only the best things. There must be uh, good for you because it's all natural. You know, topical steroids are natural because our bodies make it. Our adrenal glands make cortical steroids. So that can be considered all natural. But you know, if you want a plant-based all natural ingredient, you know, I poison ivy, poison oak, those are all natural. And you can see what it does to your skin. I hope you never see it happen to yourself but it can cause a really bad blistering reaction. So all natural, be very careful with, you know, beeswax. We're starting to see people getting allergic to propolis and the beeswax. So be careful with all natural products. Okay, parents, this video should be helpful. I think it will be. These are things I wish I knew before becoming a parent or right when I became a parent in Boston. Um, these are things that you'll just um, implement into your routine. You'll implement it into your diaper bags. Uh, like I said before, you want to layer things on quite a bit because the kid, your babies won't complain that things are too goopy, too oily, too greasy. You just need to protect their skin and, and do what's right for them, okay? So sun protect, moisturize, uh, and protect their bottoms because there's a lot of things that go on down there as you'll, as you'll see or as you know. So uh, be safe everyone. Uh, take care of your babies. Love your babies during this time. If you guys like this video, please hit the like button and please put in the comments that you want me to talk more about, uh, you know, skincare products for kids. These are my, uh, my favorite uh, products. So I hope they, I hope you like them too. All right, take care everyone. I'm a new parent. Ah! Okay, ready? Go! Put it ah! on! <laughs>